Welcome back to Lintec's product training video series. In this installment, we're going to focus on the control electronics that Lintec manufactures, which allow you to remotely operate Square D's motorized breakers. As you recall, there are two types of motorized breakers. There's the QOPL version, which fits into any Square D QO compatible load center or panel board, and is controlled by landing the built-in 60-inch pigtail onto one of Lintec's driver control boards, and that's mounted in the low-voltage sidecar. The newer style of motorized breaker is the Powerlink G3. Now the Powerlink G3 plugs into a special control bus that is mounted into the high voltage cabinet and then the breakers plug in directly to that. So Lintex Electronics allow you to monitor, program, and control the breakers by communicating through this same control bus. Now both types of breakers are available in 15, 20, or 30 amp variations in one, two, or three poles. So functionally, they're very similar. The differences are called out in the motorized breaker tutorial video that is also available on YouTube. First, let's take a look at the control board options for the QOPL series of motorized breaker. There are three flavors of control boards for the QOPL motorized breaker. Each board type is specifically designed to be controlled one way and one way only. The first control board that we'll talk about is the modular sequencing or MS series board. This is the board that Lintec is best known for. The MS series board allows you to sequentially turn on or off a whole series of breakers with the touch of a single button. Here's how this series is laid out. First, there's the breaker hookup. As mentioned previously, each QOPL breaker has a 60 inch pigtail attached. This pigtail has to be run through a sleeve into the low voltage compartment where it's landed in the order that you'd like your breakers to go on or off. Attaching is very simple. Simply a small flat headed screwdriver three positions per breaker and you're all hooked up. Next there's the jumper settings. On the MS-12 board there's a very simple set of jumpers where you, where you move the jumpers to correspond with the, with the delay settings that you'd like to achieve. Then there's the control wire hookup. It's as simple as hooking up two twisted pair or four conductors to a set of buttons which can be up to 5,000 feet away for operation. You can also have up to six sets of buttons in parallel turning the system on or off. So you can have multiple control locations if you'd like. After that, if you would like to add more than 12 breakers, it's as simple as adding a couple of cascade connectors to each adjoining board. Theoretically, they can daisy chain infinitely. Each panel itself is designed to hold up to one to three boards, depending on how many breakers you would like to control in that particular uh, panel. And then again, if uh, additional circuits are needed, additional panels can be daisy chained uh, to each other. The second control board option is the lighting control or LC series driver board. The LC series of control boards were developed to give AV operators a way to turn individual lighting circuits on and off from a DMX control console. The idea was simple. The need for remote control of non-dimmed lighting was growing greater all of the time and more and more intelligent lighting needed the capability to be remotely reset. So why not build that capability into the branch circuit breaker panel that had to be put on the wall anyway? Now here's the way that this series is laid out. Now on the DMX board, when you purchase a control board, you're given a set of connectors. Instead of landing the pigtail to a Phoenix style connector, it's landed to, to a three position connector, which is then uh, just plugged into the board. This board also has a jumper series. Again, this is controlled by DMX512. One of the keys is that you have to tell the control console what your first address is. So you use these three jumpers to position them on the first address. The board then recognizes how many controllable devices are hooked onto this series and will take that many consecutive addresses. So for instance, if you were to select uh, that your first channel were 254, it would take 254, 255, 256, etc. until uh, it used up as many addresses as it, as it needed for that many controllable devices. Once again, you can, you can uh, plug multiple boards together and uh, you would just tie into additional boards to this bottom series of uh, cascade connectors uh, there. And then the last uh, piece of this is control wiring. Your DMX connects there. So once you have your DNX control wire here, your first address set, and all your breakers plugged onto your control board, the board does the rest. The third control board option for the QOPL breaker is the Serial Control or SC series of control board. 
This board was rolled out in the first quarter of 2010 in response to AV system designers looking for a way to turn on and off a whole host of electrical appliances using existing RS-232 control systems. The great thing about working under the control of an RS-232 control system is that you can program your own energy management macros or sequencing routines as needed. Lintech gives you the ability to have individual circuit on-off control and the RS-232 system gives you unlimited programming options. Here's how this series is laid out. In terms of breaker hookup, in terms of breaker hookup, this hooks up exactly the same as the DMX board. We provide three position connectors, which you uh, wire your pigtail into, and then you just plug it onto the board. We have a series of jumpers, where again you program your first RS-232 address, and then the system automatically takes as many consecutive addresses as are needed uh, to, control, to control however many uh, motorized breakers that you have on this particular system. Control wire is hooked up here, and again, it's dual path. And then again, unlimited daisy chain ability uh, using cascade connectors uh, to each subsequent board. So when you're ordering a system using QOPL breakers, you can build your part number by first telling us how you want to control the breakers. So for instance, if you know that you want to order them, if you know that you want to control your breakers using uh, sequencing, you start your part number with MS for modular sequencing. If you know you want to control your breakers via DMX512, you start your part number with LC for lighting control, or if you'd like to start your, if you'd like to have a panel that's controllable by RS-232, you start your part number by SC, and that narrows down, that tells us how to populate the panel with boards. The most important thing to realize about the RPC system is that it is software driven. The mechanical connections required in the QOPL system are not needed here. The breaker simply plugs into the control bus as shown earlier and Lintech monitors and controls the breakers by connecting to the top of each control bus. This means that a single RPC controller can now control up to 167 breakers spread out across four panels. There's great economies of scale with this system. Uh, and here's how some of the, the key parts uh, feed out. Because again, all of this would fit into a low voltage compartment uh, so that you can open it up at any time, uh, even when the panel is hot. This is our main controller. On this controller is built a uh, processing chip that basically has it function as a small computer along with a web server uh, is built right in. You can tap into the web server by connecting with the crossover cable in a laptop or hooking it up to your, to your network. You'll see here some uh, digital I.O. connections and these are additional digital I.O. So you have up to 38 points of digital I.O. Uh, that you can connect for occupancy sensors, local switching, uh, etc. Here's where we connect to our first two control buses. And then if you have multiple panels, this is what we call our multi-panel expander board. So this is panel one where we connect to the first two control buses. You connect to the next two control buses in panel two, panel three, and panel four uh, across the multi-panel expander. So this one system will allow you to control up to four panels worth of breakers, 38 points of local control. And then once it's programmed on the web server, and it's compatible with any browser, you simply uh, determine how you'd like to control it. We have RS-232 connection, so you can control it with your Crestron, AMX, uh, Zantec, Biamp, whatever has an RS-232 output. Or you have a DMX-512 uh, interface, if you'd like to control it with, uh, for lighting control in a DMX environment. Uh, or again, you can control it uh, across Ethernet with a TCP IP. So a lot of different forms of control. Now this control system is just complex enough that we have a film dedicated to how to program uh, the GUI in this particular system. So uh, that's all we're going to cover uh, for the RPC. Uh, but I just thought it was important to note the difference in communication and control style uh, from this uh, to the QOPL style breakers.